Kicks it high and short. Going to be fielded by Lorenzo Neal at the 25. Yeah, give pitches it, to... it back to Wycheck. He throws it across the field to Dyson. He's got something. 30. On this edition of Titans All Access. He's got 40, something. 50, He's got 40. it. We've got one question for you. 20, 10, He's got five, it. End zone. Where were you? Touchdown, Titans. There are no flags on the field. It's a miracle. Tennessee has pulled a miracle. Plus, Titans quarterback Will Levis reflects on his rookie season. All of that and plenty more coming up as Titans All Access starts right now. But there he is, the Yuli Bulldozer, Derrick Henry. Got Chris Moore. Can he catch it? No, what a catch! Will Levis! What a big time throw! Yeah. Big Jeff fires up another second. Bonnie Hooker, there's Hopkins making the catch. Welcome to the BetMGM studio in the first Titans All Access of 2024. Happy New Year. I'm Mike Keith. We're going to put our best foot forward in the new year with a very special story. As an organization, the Tennessee Titans aim to win, serve, and entertain. This week's Listen Up with Duncan focuses on the serve as the Titans recently partnered with Make-A-Wish Middle Tennessee to grant Mason's wish. Mason is a six-year-old from Nashville who was diagnosed with osteosarcoma last April. Before undergoing chemotherapy, Mason had to have emergency heart surgery. Mason wrapped up his sixth and final round of chemo on January 4th. His wish? To spend a couple of days with his favorite football team the Tennessee Titans. So today we're granting the first part of Mason's wish and he really wanted a Titans experience and that's what we've given him today. Buddy, good, good seeing you. Henry. What's up, how you doing? He knows exactly like the 23rd, 24th are his Titans days. I tried to get him to do like Disney or something else, but I was like, no, this is like Mason's Disney World. This is like, all he cares about. This is, about hey, it's a two-point play, so we got to get in, all right? Okay. All right, here let's we go. Go, 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 That's a touchdown, right? Oh, my. <laughs> oh, man. You know, me, him, and his family, and, uh, you know, just sit down and have a conversation with him. I think the biggest one to him beat me, like, um, I think it was, like, 40-something to eight. And Madden, so you know he's pretty good at Madden. No, no, you ready to laugh now? <laughs> Golly! See a smile on these kids' face, especially like a kid like Mason who's dealing with, you know, something way bigger than um, you know the problem that sometimes I could have, especially with the game of football. So <laughs> just being able to, to be around him and see that smile on his face means a lot to me. So. Every kid who goes through what Mason's going through finds a different reason to fight and a different reason to be inspired. And for Mason, it's the Titans. Tighten up on me! Watch that way! Tighten up! Yeah. Later in the show, a special Nissan Insider with quarterback Will Levis. But when Titans All Access returns, Dave McGinnis joins me to hit the Wayback Machine for a very special Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft. Welcome back to the Vet MGM <laughs> studio and Titans All Access. I'm joined by Titans Radio's Coach Dave McGinnis, who's going to take us beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft, and with the 24th anniversary of the Music City Miracle coming up on Monday, Coach Mack is going to break down the most famous play in franchise history. Are you ready? I'm ready. 24 years ago, wow. Hard to believe, isn't it? It really is. The quality of this film is amazing. No wonder my eyes are bad now. I spent <laughs> 31 years watching tape like this in the National Football League before they ever got it fixed. The deception of this is to get everybody running this way to try to get all of these people here moving towards what it looks like is gonna be a reverse run. I joined Jeff Fisher's staff a year after this. Practice this every Saturday. And about half the guys paid attention to it. It was, it was, it's right at the end of practice. As you watch this, I want you to just watch how this deception works perfectly. Before we get to the play, I want everybody to, to look 
right here. This is Byron Boston. Yes. David Boston's dad. David Boston played for me, was a great player in the league. But Byron Boston was the line judge. See his hand right here sticking backwards? This is a signal to say that this was a, this was a lateral. Byron Boston said he immediately saw that the, the thing was a lateral. And so here is the evidence right here for any Buffalo Bills fan watching. Okay, Mike, let's go. And here's Kevin. And there's, and there's Dice. On your mark, get set, go. They set up a perfect wall. The wall that they set up is, abs this worked absolutely perfect. Buffalo was completely confused. What a throw by Wycheck. Well, 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 you know what? I mean, look at this. It so, just, it was, so Frankie is running to his right, stops and throws back to the left. Here's the football. So, and he's wearing the big pads. Andy George pads. He's played 59 minutes and 44 seconds. He's tired. <laughs> And he throws this pass across the field. And look how accurate that is. Dyson right there is able to step back and make the catch. And look, everybody from Buffalo is here. And look at this, look at this perfect wall that the Titans have set up. This right here is one of the most iconic plays in the National Football League. And here is Steve Christie. And he's going to be the only man left to try to make the tackle. Watch Terry Killens get on him. Boom. Watch him hit him again. Boom. And Kevin Dyson to the house. That's a thing of beauty. Where were you? Oh, yeah, I know exactly When the I Music was. City Miracle play happened 24 years ago. I was coaching Arizona. The year before, we had just beaten Dallas in the playoffs for the first Cardinal victory in a playoff game in 51 years. I just built a big house, all the house full of people, because I knew everybody on each coaching staff. Knew Wade, knew Fish, knew everybody. And I know if these people went nuts in the stands, my living room was torn up. <laughs> Everybody was losing their mind. Everybody remembers where they were. It's outstanding. Coach Mack, thank you. Coming up later on this edition of Titans All Access, Will Levis joins me to discuss his rookie season. But up next, our final Titans at 25, presented by Bud Light. And we ask, where were you? during the Music City Miracle. Actually, someone special asks, where were you? That's next on Titans All Access. Kevin Dyson is deep with Ike Bird. Do the Titans have a miracle left in them in what has been a magical season to this point? Christie kicks it high and short. Going to be fielded by Lorenzo Neal at the 25. Yeah, Pitches it, to... it back to Wycheck. He throws it across the field to Dyson. He's... You know where I was during the Music City Miracle. Got something. 30, He's 40, got something. 50, He's got 40, it. 40, He's got 40, it. 20, 10, He's got 5. it. My question is. End zone. Touchdown Titans. There are no flags on the field. It's a miracle. Where were you? Section 139, row Q, seats one through six. I was at a house with a bunch of my high school friends, uh, and we were watching the game. We were actually like playing football outside in his yard. I was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We had a game against LSU. I was a cameraman at the time on the field. I was on my way to Bean Station. Uh, Bean Station's a little community over in East Tennessee, but my wife and I were headed back to East Tennessee to see her mom and dad. I had the best seat in the house between Mike Keith and Pat Ryan, who was the color analyst at the time. I watched the game, laying in bed, and uh, the miracle happened, and I knew that we had Monday Night Nitro in Buffalo. I was at the... 35. So I was sitting in the upper deck in the 300 level, and I was walking down the long, winding road of a ramp. We had done a pregame show, and my general manager was kind enough to let us come watch the game in the suite. I'm preparing for the postgame show, making sure the commercials are ready, making sure we're ready. I hear Mike uh, exclaim that Frank Wycheck has gotten the pass, and he's lateraling it. And then you're mesmerized. He catches the ball. I'm like, all right, Neil, fair catch it. And he didn't. He catches. It. I'm like, oh God, no. So he starts to run a little bit, and and I'm like, just get down on the knee. You know, let the, let's let's get the ball back in nine's hands so we can work his magic. Then he hands it to Frank Wanchek, and Frank, okay, I love Frank, but Frank is not going to outrun anybody. What is what are we doing here? 
Seriously? And then all of a sudden, I see him throw a nice, beautiful lateral to Kevin Dyson. And I see a wall of blue jerseys and not one Buffalo Bill in sight. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Wow, this thing is really, it's going to happen. I said, Steve, watch this. I said, we're going to score. Three splits to the end zone. Kevin's running down the sideline. I'm right behind him, running, screaming, jumping up and down. This pandemonium. Oh, the, the, the stadium exploded. Going down the sideline, he looked at me. He's like, we did it. It was awesome. It was one of my favorite memories of all time. It was the best feeling ever, actually. I'd agree with that. Some people left the stadium and missed the Music City Miracle. Did you know that the owner may not have seen it? Our suite was next to a big double suite. That big double suite belonged to Bud Adams, the owner of the Tennessee Titans. With 16 seconds left, Buffalo kicks the field goal and the stadium just sucked dry of air. Everybody in our suite, everybody in the other suite were you know, putting stuff down and getting ready and they're heading to the doors and people are leaving. And then they make the kick and it's a short kick. Kevin Dyson, wide open, catches it for 75 yards and the place explodes and everybody comes running back into the suites. The last person in is Mr. Bud Adams. <laughs> Not in there when it happened. <laughs> now that's a good story. You hear Pat say, he's got something, 30, he's 40. got something. He's got something, I think he's got something. And then Yolanda and I are just going crazy in the car. So I can see the jumbotron, they kick off, and the fans are booing and yelling, and they stop. And I was like, okay. And then I spin around, and I picked up Dyson about the 50-yard line. There was a silence, you know, when they reviewed the play. Everybody got real quiet, you know, 70,000 people. And then I remember I turned around real quick, because I knew the, the referee was going to say it was either good or bad. And he said it was good, and people was bedlam after that. After reviewing the play, ruling on the field stand. Yeah! I remember I got knocked down in the aisle. So I'm on the concrete. It's wet. It's cold. My knuckles were bleeding. My clothes were stained. And all of that just added to the moment and the feel. Not only is the Music City Miracle one of the most famous plays in NFL history, it also changed this franchise's history and even the city's history. For anybody who thought pro football might not work in the Mid-South or in the Middle Tennessee area, it proved them wrong. I remember watching strangers just hugging each other, like people crying, weeping. You know, looking out into the stands, seeing fans hugging and celebrating, and some of them in tears. Um, you know, it, I think it really put the Titans on the map. The Music City Miracle, you really can't put a price tag on what that meant to the organization, what it meant to the, to the fandom here in the area. I will be remembered as part of the Music City Miracle as long as football is played, but the play, it isn't mine. It's yours. It belongs to all of us. Welcome back to the Bet MGM Studio and Titans All Access. Very pleased to be joined for this week's Nissan Insider, Titans quarterback, Will Levis. Will, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Has any part of the entire last eight months, including the football season, gone as you would have expected it to back when you got drafted? No, I mean, I tried not to have any uh, expectations. You know, I, I had a mindset of not letting the circumstances and you know, whether personal or team or everything affected how I came into the building and worked every day. So, um, you know, there's always going to be those things that you can never expect. And there's been a lot of those things happened, but I feel like I've kept the right mindset to just be able to roll through them. Looking Levis, throwing deep Levis, trying to get it to Hopkins. He's got it at the five. Go! Into the end zone. Touchdown, Titans! Throws deep downfield. There's Hopkins all alone. 20, 15, 10, 5, end zone. Ladies and gentlemen, give him 61 yards! Touchdown, Titans! Overall, that Atlanta game couldn't have gone much better. Have you have you ever had a first start at any other level that went that well? No, I mean, that was one of those games where just like all things were clicking and everything in the game plan, you know, the shots that we were dialing it up, uh, they were there and the balls were there and the guys were in the right spots and they made the catches. And, when, when all that clicks, it's a beautiful thing. Well, it was obvious that you checked yourself right after that game. You knew every game wouldn't go that smoothly. And 
you handled it that way. What in your training led you to know to do that or did somebody else help to kind of make sure that you did that? Yeah, I think that there's been a lot of people throughout my athletic career that have helped me just with my mental and, and, and with my emotions, especially I think when I was a younger, a more immature uh, player, I would let bad things affect me, I'd let good things affect me. And you gotta be able to keep in that neutral space that we talk about. And, uh, you know, I gotta thank the coaches here in this building for being those guys for me uh, right now, and Coach London, and Coach Kelly, and, and that we meet with every day in the quarterback room. Um, they do a good job on the sideline as well, just making sure that I'm getting back to neutral. You talked about that in training camp some, that you were working with mental coaching, that you, after practice, you would do some things to let the bad plays go because that was something you wanted to get better about leading into your pro career. Explain that and talk about what you've done with that mental sort of part of the game and the coaching and the training you get. I think it's just reaffirming with myself that, you know, bad things are going to happen. And you turn on any game in the NFL, bad things are going to happen. You know, best, the best team in the league is going to have a three and out. The best offense in the league is it's going to have turnovers. And once you accept that and realize that it's just more about how you respond and, and how you're able to overcome those things, you stop fretting about it. So the more ball I watch, the more I understand the game, the more I realized how small a mistake is in the scheme of things, um, and the more I just mature, I think I'm able to be able to handle those situations and move on from them better. We knew here in Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, even if we're not involved in the draft room and things like this, we had a pretty big feeling that they would try to take you because the Titans really, really liked Will Levis. What do you think they got right about you that allowed them to push forward in that way, make the connection, and then put you in a position to be successful as a rookie? I think they just saw my competitiveness, um, my drive, uh, my spirit, but I'm glad that the, the Titans were able to see kind of my true true me. Uh, the tape speak, speaks for itself, obviously. They, they liked what I do as a player at the bare minimum, um, obviously, but it, I think they just saw through and realized who I am as a person. They really got to know you. Is that fair to say? For sure. Yeah, I mean, they, they checked all the boxes. They, they visited with me more than anybody else. I, I had as many meetings with them. Um, as a lot of other teams combined, you know, so I knew that they were interested and they wanted to, you know, poke and prod and understand me at a deep level, which I thought was really great because um, they, you know, were taking me seriously and, and they wanted me to potentially be here as a, as a guy that could lead this team. Okay, let's go. They know it's coming. Who cares? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good drive. Good drive. <laughs> we gonna get another shot here right quick. We gonna get it tightened up. Get this on. Let's go. Just get one. What would Will Levis of today tell the Will Levis of draft night when you're sitting in that green room that you wish that Will Levis would have known that night? What would help him? That he's not getting picked in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> At least I could have, it would have saved me some stress, some time maybe, no, but. Um, That's good. No, I would tell him to, you know, just trust the process and that this is what was meant for you. And despite it kind of feeling as screwy as it did when it, when it did all happen, that, uh, you know, a couple months from now, you're gonna realize that you're in the right spot and uh, that the people, you're here because the people want you and they love you. And um, that would have kept me at ease. I definitely thought I had a little bit jacked up mindset when it was first happened at that time, but I was able to, to flip it there pretty soon after, but, um, could have gone, or could have at least um, gained a few hours of sleep that night if I was able to get my mind um, a little more clear. Well, we're thrilled you're here. Uh, it is so much fun watching you play, and Titans fans all over excited about the rest of this year. We're not giving up anything, but certainly excited about what's to come. Will Levis, thank you so much for the Thanks time. Thanks so much, Mike. All right. When Titans All Access continues, we've got a lot more as we get you ready for this weekend's game with Jacksonville. Stay with us. Hey, Titans fans, it's Matt Moore. Former Tennessee Titan Javon Curse here. This is Coach Mack. What's up, everybody? Former Titan Keith Bullock here. Former Tennessee Titan Kevin Dyson. Be sure to watch Taste of Tennessee. The place, the food, the folks. This is a Taste of Tennessee. This is absolutely delicious. Exclusively on LG channels and LG OLED TVs. 
The decision of the week is presented by Hughes and Coleman. The Titans' decision to trade for kicker Nick Folk has proven to be an excellent decision. The 39-year-old Folk has made 29 of 30 field goals, including five from over 50 yards, and Folk recording a surprising 32 touchbacks on kickoffs. Reliable, steady, and consistent. Nick Folk has been all of these things for the Tennessee Titans in 2023. That's why trading for Folk was a great decision. The decision of the week presented by Hughes and Coleman. It's time for my three seat geek keys. Let it rip. Jacksonville needs this game to win the AFC South. The Jaguars could be tight. This is it for the Titans 2023 season. Tennessee has zero reason to be tight. Let it rip and see what happens. What? Why not? Make the big plays is key number two. For the last three weeks, the Titans have had big play opportunities on both offense and defense and failed to capitalize. Those opportunities will come up again on Sunday, so this time, make those plays. Not only will it give Tennessee the best chance to win the game, but it also gives the players who make them confidence and momentum heading into the offseason. Key number three, start fast. Self-explanatory, right? But it's week 18, and the Titans season will be done around 3.15 Central on Sunday afternoon. If Tennessee falls behind early, the season will likely end earlier. That's just the way these sorts of games work. But if the Titans jump on the Jags on Sunday, it all gets and likely stays interesting. Get ahead early, put the pressure on Jacksonville, and start 2024 with a win. The Titans host the Jaguars at Nissan Stadium this Sunday at noon Central time. Titans Countdown starts on your favorite Titans radio station at 11 a.m. Central. We hope you'll join us. I'm Mike Keith, thanking our fine staff and most of all, thanking you for watching Titans All Access. We'll see you next time, later in 2024.